When I was in high school, my app English teacher told us we weren't allowed to eat in class, so I took that as a personal challenge to see what the most ridiculous thing I could eat in class without getting caught was, so I started bringing soup to class, and as soon as I'd crack the lid of my thermos, the tiniest bit this football player that sat like three rows in front of me would going, I smell meat. Someone has soup, and no one ever believed him. Football player has a plus 2 to perception and a minus 2 to charisma. The only valid response. Map. The crazy thing about babies is that like, some people would think that reading a baby a book about farm animals is teaching them about farm animals, but really it's teaching them about the concept of a book and how there's new information on each page of a single object, but really, beyond that, it's teaching them how language works, and beyond that it's really actually teaching them about human interaction. And really really it's them learning about existing in a three dimensional space and how they can navigate that space, but actually, above all it is teaching them that mama loves them. In my head, there's a little mouse wearing a little apron, and she makes all my emotions. She needs to read a fking recipe, this bee is just making a mess. So, today this kid yelled nanny the f in the middle of a test, and I felt compelled to share this to the world. Teachers, share the weird crap your kids have done. I'm not a teacher, yet, but I do work with students, and one of them had the nerve to look me dead in the eye and ask me, why would it be a bad idea for me to eat this entire marker? They're 11. And 4th grader asked for a high five by saying, a little slappy to make daddy happy. I did not give him a high five. A student during break had her head in her arms and was shaking a bit, so I asked the kid next to her whether she was laughing or crying, and this 8 year old stared me in the eye deadpan and said, I'm crying on the inside. Wait, I take that back, I can't believe I forgot about the time I brought in a small stuffed octopus as a class mascot, because why the f not? It was a class of high schoolers, and I didn't imagine they'd actually care much, but one student snuck in a snack and gave it to the octopus as a tribute, which led to other students doing the same thing, until every day there was a pile of offerings to feed the overseer, mostly consisting of things like string cheeses and small bags of chips, but sometimes there will be a couple bucks in quarters. One kid brought in some giant pocky I think, and at one point there was a cold stone gift card. This stuffed octopus gained a cult following. Later I brought in another stuffed octopus that looked exactly the same but bigger and told the class that Fweet the Overseer accepted their offerings and became stronger. These high schoolers lost their goddamn minds. Oh my god. I love this. Thank you for letting those kids be the dorks all high schoolers are. A friend and I were in a public washroom at a bar last night, and she said, shh, I want to text my ex, and three different girls in the bathroom stall screamed out, don't f***ing text your ex. Modern day Greek chorus. The story of cats is that in the 1930s, the famous poet T.S. Eliot wrote a book of cute as little cat themed poems for his godchildren. And then. 40 years later, Andrew Lloyd Webber found a lost cat poem that T.S. Eliot had cut from the cat book for being too sad for children, and ALW was like, whoa, a cat, that's sad, that's deep, man, I wanna make a musical out of this. So, the producer assigned to the project was like, okay, I guess you could maybe read these cat poems as a satire of 1930s British society? We could probably do something sort of interesting with that. I'm thinking a cast of about 5 and. And ALW was like, no. Forget the satire. Also, I want a cast of dozens in the most advanced special effects technology ever seen on stage. I've taken out a second mortgage on my house to fund this. And the producer was like, wah, you, wah, do you even have a plot? So ALW got a bunch of actors and writers and artists together, and they holed up, and did cocaine workshopped for 5 weeks, and at the end of it, they emerged and said, the plot is, that a bunch of cats are having a dance contest for the right to take a UFO to cat heaven, and then it made 2 billion dollars. I'm sorry, the plot of cats is what? I've heard high schoolers say, why stop at capitalism? Destroy everything. Guys, it's been 3 weeks since I've eaten a vegetable. At least we have means to dull the pain of existence. An app student 
I thought 7 was less than 6. While filling the cap of their water bottle with water. Shots 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 shots. Friend 1. If all your friends jumped off a bridge, would. Friend 2. Probably. I'm gonna go home and drink a whole glass of weed. If cows ruled the world, would they drink human milk? Student. My calculator is broken. Teacher. Your calculator isn't broken. You're broken. No. Actually I think you have to be of age to be considered a cougar. During math class on the second floor, student 1. So, like, how far do you think the distance is from that window to the ground? Student 2. Enough. Teacher. Has anyone ever been to New Orleans? Student. Does popes count? We're in adult limbo. I'm not a teen. And I'm not an adult. I'm suffering. That's what I am. Look at my swings leg up to show shorts, not pants. Date a girl who teleports around the room erratically when she gets anxious. B. That's an enderman. Date an enderman. Phil my dear. White girl with long brown hair is living in a dystopian society. She is different, though. She can punch things. She punches things and changes the world. Um, ever heard of Divergent? Think you need to read that before you reblog this stupid post again. Or even Hunger Games. There's quite a lot more, but I'm sleepy, so I won't go into detail. I'm laughing so hard. This is by far the best response to this post. The best way to draw a frog is to give it as few frog qualities as possible. Just enough that it barely registers as a frog. Treat spiders the way you want to be treated. Killed without hesitation. Why would I inflate a spider? I will beat you with a fucking rock. RF equals lol whoops. OF equals I've made an irreversible fatal error. Or F equals I can't believe you've done this. Ceremonial fungal mask. Do you know the mushroom man? I don't want to know the mushroom man. But perhaps he wants to know you. A person from 150 years ago would be terrified by modern stuff. However, a duck from 150 years ago would just be all like, still got lakes? Yes? Okay, cool. How fleeting are all human passions compared with the massive continuity of ducks? Dorothy L. Sayers, Gordy Knight, 1935. Reblogging again, because I thought they changed the quote, so I decided to look up the actual quote, and it's not fake, that is very much the actual quote. My heart aches for a time, so so long ago, where there was this Minecraft glitch that'd occasionally make the squids float through the air, just swimming in the sky. It was a happier time. I hate the fact that the sentence mum is our heir because we ate them is factual. I'm sorry, what? I'm so happy to be the one to introduce you to the horrible few hundred years where Europeans regularly consumed ground Egyptian mummies. Till. Charles Darwin married his first cousin, with whom he had 10 children. Three died as infants, and three were infertile. He was the first to raise the question if incest may cause weaknesses in offspring after studying inbred plants in his garden. Charles Darwin looking at his f***ed up tomatoes. Osh, that me. This is the funniest comment I've read on a post. Play cancelled. After actor breaks character to fight an audience member. Me. I just looked this up, and it turned out it was about a production of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, a play which famously features a closeted gay lead character. A member of the audience was Cat calling female actresses and shouting homophobic abuse when actor John Lacey, who played the character Big Daddy, paused his performance and called him out. The heckler replied, what are you going to do about it? To which Lacey responded by leaping down into the audience and knocking him to the ground. Hash, it's what Tennessee Williams would have wanted. Opens a bag of hot cheetahs at a funeral. Everyone else. What's that crinkling noise coming from inside the coffin? How do Japanese chihuahuas say hello? Connor chihuahua. I lost 5 followers for posting this. Introducing a new alignment. Chaotic lawful. I have a strict moral code 
but nobody can figure out what the hell it is. Not to be confused with lawful chaotic, which is creating as much chaos as possible by following the letter of the law, usually to ridiculous extremes. If every pork chop were perfect, we wouldn't have hot dogs. I think one of my favorite things about Steven Universe, and one of the things I find most touching and personally affirming, is the relationship between Rose Quartz and Greg. I mean, here's Rose, who's represented as this powerful intelligent charismatic beautiful woman, respected as both a warrior and a leader. She travels to Earth, and decides to spend her life there, and in 6000 years, the human she decides is most interesting, most engaging, most beautiful, is Greg. Who's there? I have a waffle lion. Greg is a doofus. He's bald. He's fat. He's a slob with no sense of style or grooming. He's practically homeless. He's a failed rock and roll star, whose dreams of fame and fortune ended with him running a small town car wash and living in the back of an ancient van. In any other show, he would be the loser of the cast, the f up a somewhat lovable, helpless goofball, who can't be counted on for anything. But Rose thought he was beautiful. It's something of a sitcom parody, the dim-witted, ugly slovenly husband with the beautiful intelligent wife. Fred and Wilma. Archie and Edith. Peter and Lois. Homer and Marge. But Rose and Greg's relationship isn't like that. Even in my favorite of those relationships, that of Marge and Homer. Homer is presented as more than a bit of a jerk. Oh, he's a fundamentally decent man who genuinely loves his family and treasures his wife, but he's also selfish, thoughtless, more than occasionally neglectful, lazy, and self-centered. And more than that, in those shows, the husband is really the main character. Most of the wife's role is reacting to his antics. But that's not Rose and Greg's story. You want one huge woman, when you could have multiple smaller ones. Ugh. Marty, women are people. Greg is a good man. Not just a decent guy under the jerky exterior, but a truly and fundamentally good man. He stands up to his misogynist buddy. He adores and encourages his son in every way. He is kind and giving to everyone he meets. He works hard, even though it's a job that he never wanted and that has taken the place of his dream. Speaking of that, even though he's never seen even a leg of the stardom he dreamed of, Greg has never lost sight of his ambitions. He still plays music, still sings, still performs, still writes albums. Greg may never make it as a rock star, but he will never stop trying. This is what Rose saw. This is what Rose, one of the most powerful and respected warriors and generals of her people, came to love. In a world where success and worth are measured primarily in material gains and career-based achievements, Greg is a reminder of what's truly important in the show. His failed music career, his chubby build, his sloppy clothes, his poverty, they don't matter. What's emphasized is the true human beauty of Greg, the warmth, the kindness, the courage, the imagination, the dedication to art and devotion to family. It's a reminder to all of us who have been pushed to be successful, been hassled about when we were going to get serious, that even if we are living in poverty, even if we have no real career, even if we are not conventionally attractive, or haven't achieved all we've wanted to, we still have value. We still have beauty and we are still loved.